I've been in a relationship for six years. I've been a bodybuilder for five. So it's safe to say my then girlfriend and now fiance didn't necessarily sign up for what it was to date a bodybuilder. And to be honest, I didn't even know what those responsibilities were at the time. But because of that, that forced us to grow and honestly go through a lot of circumstances that tested our relationship. And now it's safe to say I'm the happiest I've ever been in my life. But that's not without trials and tribulations. And honestly, forcing me to take a step back and realize is bodybuilding something that I can manage while also being in a relationship. Throughout that, we grew. And throughout that, we've learned a lot of different tips that can help you guys manage your relationship while being a bodybuilder. Easy, white chocolate. I wouldn't want you to melt. It is currently 85 degrees, UVs at a 10. So we're super setting today's beach day with hydration, lemon crush flavor from Ghost. Now, basically, to sum it up and keep it as simple as possible, think of drinking, for every one water bottle, think of drinking two or getting the value of two. So we have regular water over there and then here two scoops of hydration so amplifying the whole effect it's crazy to think we are a week away from getting married so being a week away megan has to make sure that we go to the beach get a base tan can we just drive Making sure that you allocate time per week to spend with your significant other. I don't care if it's one day a week, two days a week, your last meal of the day, whatever it is, make sure you spend some time to further the relationship, invest back not only into your bodybuilding journey, but your relationship. I think this is where people go wrong. They get comfortable and they think that if they just do the same old, same old, then you're going to make it on the other side, at least in terms of a relationship. But they put all the emphasis and focus on the bodybuilding when in reality, your relationship is just like bodybuilding. It needs consistent work. It's not one of those things that you can just put in, in autopilot and it's going to get to the destination perfectly. I think that's where a lot of people go wrong. So for me personally, something that I didn't learn until not only my first prep, it took me past my second prep, and even deeper into my third prep where I finally started to realize that my relationship needed to be consistently prioritized. And at the end of the day, if you're not doing that, then you're working backwards. It's not staying stagnant, it's going backwards. So what I personally do on my rest days today, I put the phone away, I put the camera away most of the time, and um, I spend individual one-on-one -on -one time, whether it's us hanging out at the house, watching a movie, just hanging out, being present. And that's something that is very hard for me. I have a business that I need to run. I got a lot of other emotions and responsibilities of so being present, even though I'm there, you know, it's one thing that she made me realize that just because I'm in the moment and I'm there doesn't mean I'm present. So same thing, make sure that you guys are being there for each other. I have not been to a grocery store in at least six months. So right now we are doing something a little different. I don't know why grocery stores are the main go-to for these one items, but this is not something you can order on Instacart. So I am no means an expert when it comes to flowers, but one of the tips that I've learned over the years, one, the simple one, make sure you don't pick a flower that looks half dead. And then I always, always, always look up the flower of the season it is. So we're in March, so lily is the most popular flower. And we don't have any lilies. So we're gonna find something that looks pretty. <laughs> so on the rare occasions that I do step foot in a grocery store, I always find myself having to stop by the dog aisle. I have to get some for Jackson, have to get some for Oakley. It's a trend that hasn't been broken every single time that I've come to the grocery store. So let's see what we got. We got some options here. This is a trigger for anybody with dogs locally. <laughs> and then They've already torn this one up multiple times. <laughs> this one's gonna piss Megan off, I gotta get it. Oh, babe, what's this for? Because you put up with me. Oh, you're so sweet. Thanks, babe. They're so pretty. And that leads me to tip number two. As bodybuilders, 
our emotions are all over the place at any given time. One minute we're happy, one minute we're upset. And a lot of times we tend to take out our emotions, especially our negative emotions, on the ones that we care about the most. And then you compound that with a timeline of a bodybuilding prep, it's safe to say our anxiety is gonna be raised just with that simple fact. But sometimes the simplest things are always the hardest things to do. Communicate, take that time. One of the biggest mistakes that I've done was to internally keep everything wrapped up, whether it's a good or bad situation, right? If it was good, I didn't want to voice it because I didn't want to jinx it. If it was bad, I didn't want to talk about it. I would close myself off. And that led to more issues later. And I realized taking a quick step back, even if you're in a bad mood, and simply communicating the way that you're feeling is gonna set you up for sex success, not just for that day, but for the rest of your life. And this can be applied to not just bodybuilding, it's everything, right? And like I said, we tend to take up our, our emotions on the people we care about the most. And I think we all can agree that it's not fair, but if we can take a step back, breathe a little bit and communicate the way that we're feeling, good or bad, I'm telling you right now, not only will your relationship be much stronger because of it, but you guys got to potentially go and grow through something that's going to set you up for success again, not just now, but in the future. Look. Look. Sit. <laughs> what are you doing? Sit. Okay, you got to sit next to him. Come on, Sit. takes me to tip number three. Do the little things. And this is a tip that is something, <laughs> it's safe to say the, uh, the toy is backfiring on me and not Megan. So I'm gonna go outside. But like I was saying, do the little things. This is a, I'm being haunted by this toy right now. Back inside. <laughs> Now, like I was saying for the third time, do the little things. This is a tip that oftentimes is so easily overlooked. Not even a tip. This is an action that a lot of times is simply overlooked, whether you're a bodybuilder or not. I think the biggest mistake in a relationship is getting comfortable and you stop doing the little things. Take it from me. I was a hopeless romantic when I first started dating Megan and I found myself getting way too comfortable with our relationship to the point that I stopped doing the little things, getting her flowers, getting her breakfast in the morning, getting her to anything that made her happy, telling her that I love her more often. This is something that I made a vow to myself to change. And just doing that, our relationship has changed for the better. All right guys, so throughout this video, we're giving you tips on how to manage a relationship while being a bodybuilder. But I realized we didn't give you a breakdown on what you can actually expect when dating a bodybuilder. So I figured on calling on the person who is closest to me who might have that experience since I've personally never dated a bodybuilder. So I wanted to pick her brain a little bit. So tell me, what are some of the things that you can experience or can expect when dating an asshole? <laughs> You're not an asshole. But um, only sometimes. <laughs> but clothes never fitting. Like you need different sets of clothes for like in season versus off season prep, all of that. So yeah. you definitely gotta have a few different types of wardrobes and yeah, always kind of. Yeah. You always gotta be shopping. I'm telling you my biggest anxiety is going clothes shopping. Even for our wedding. We had to get a custom suit and it didn't fit and then I lost, you know, eight pounds and it ended up fitting. So depending on the season, it fluctuates drastically. And then body dysmorphia. You know, it's something that oftentimes is pretty overlooked, but uh, there's times where I just never feel confident 
You know, bodybuilders, they never feel ready. So half the time I'm looking in the mirror, you know, from the outside world, people might think, holy crap, they look amazing. Meanwhile, I want to put on a hoodie and a sweatshirt and there's a hideaway because I'm, I don't feel like I'm, I'm ready. And sometimes we can kind of take that out. You gotta put things into perspective with him. Like if he's like, I don't wanna to go to the beach, I look awful. I'm like, <laughs> you probably look the best on that beach right now, so. It's crazy how much your standards change. Yeah. It's crazy. All right, what else we got? Um, the snoring. Yeah. <laughs> it's really bad. You might need to invest in a CPAP machine down the road for them, but um, <laughs> if, if, if it's anything like his. <laughs> yeah. Uh... It's kind of scary. You have to like check in on them throughout the night. Dude, she literally will like check to see if I'm like still he, alive. He, like, chokes sleep. <laughs> See, it's weird, but it's only when I'm like in peak bulk, um, but when I'm like leaner, like am I snoring now? You haven't all week besides last night. I literally <laughs> had to hit you. Oh my God. Ooh. The deadly protein farts. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Okay. I'll be honest. Like, you know, it's bad when you fart and you can't even smell, like handle your own fart. It's like, you know, it's you feel disgusting. You have to like evacuate the room. Like, <laughs> <ten minutes. laughs> like I, I actually feel guilty. Like it's, it's, it's rough. And again, like I said, like if you can't even handle the, your own smell of your farts, I want you to imagine your significant other. So that's something that is oftentimes overlooked, but it happens for everybody. I'm eating like 320 grams of protein right now. So that's, a lot. that's gonna go somewhere. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else we got? The laundry, excessive laundry. Excessive. You, you wake up in the morning, you do cardio. That's one outfit. You shower, you change. That's your outfit for like the morning. Then you go to the gym, <laughs> then you gotta shower again and you change. So that's like at least three, three, not three hours, three outfits a day. So times that by like seven days a week, at a minimum, it's like 21 outfits a week. So you're consistently doing laundry, folding, yeah. all of that. Oh, to go off of that, the pots and pans. If they cook anything like him, you're gonna need like high temperature, baby. You're gonna need like a subscription of new pots and pans because they'll ruin them. Honestly, and that leads into the next really good point: how expensive this sport is. You have to realize a normal person looks at their day with breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Bodybuilders look at meal one, two, three, four, five, and six. There's so many meals throughout the day, and like she said, we. We take it out on the pans. High temperatures. A they lot. they gotta cook fast because they have so many times they gotta cook. It, it's the day. like nobody wants to sit around and put it on a medium temperature and, and just wait. Meanwhile, if I ask her like to make a meal for me, it'll be on like low temperature and I'm sitting there forever waiting for a meal. But 100% right. Like I have to have my own pots and pans separate from like the the normal houses pots and pans because I go through them. There's literally a new pan like every two to three months. The low sex drive. Like, this is something that I'd never personally ever experienced. And it's one of those things where, like, I don't know. So it's still even hard to put in the words. You know, it's just one of those things where, you know, when you are dieting down so hard, you're doing hours of cardio, you're eating practically no food to fuel your body, you know, you have no energy but to sleep. Sleep. <laughs> like, literally. There's literally times where I'm laying in bed and I am watching Megan cook my meal. Like our floor, our bedroom is like kind of right near the kitchen. It's kind of a weird setup, but I can directly <laughs> see right from my bed to the kitchen. And there's times I'm starving and I'm not have any energy just to get up. So the, the sex drive is, it's, it's hard, man. You know, like it's one of those things in a relationship where let's be real, you want to keep that consistent, but sometimes your body just doesn't allow it. It's weird. Cause it goes through peaks and valleys too. Like when the androgens are high, Sex drive is high. When they're low, food's low, energy's low, cardio's high. It's safe to say, ain't nothing get enough. Not even me for food. <laughs> so <laughs> that, was, that was good. <laughs> that leads me in to my last tip. And this one is one that is oftentimes overlooked. And um, I'm lucky in this situation. Yeah, you gotta be supportive of them. Like when we first met, you were not into bodybuilding. You were just like a college kid, football player, went out drinking, partying all the time. So when our relationship started, we like went out to eat a lot, we went out on dates, did fun things, but then 
One day he woke up, he's like, I'm gonna do bodybuilding. And I'm like, what? Is she bodybuilding? Like, she, I had no idea anything of it, but I had to learn it. And it was tough at first, but I think over time I saw, like, the success he had with it, his passion for it, and you gotta be supportive of what they like and how, where they wanna take their life. So, yeah, just gotta be supportive of them. So then it makes them happy. <laughs> and, yeah. And hopefully them happy too. Yeah. He's seeing you happy. And because then they'll be in a better mood if they feel supported <laughs> by you. We understand bodybuilding, it's a selfish sport. We sacrifice a lot. I lost my job. I lost friendships. I lost my sanity at certain points. And if it weren't for the foundation that I had and, and the support that I had at home, I don't know where I would be. Because there's multiple nights where I came home just a shell of myself, broken down. And it's the little things, you know? The little support that she had for me during those deep moments is a big part of the reason why I've been able to climb through the pro ranks, call myself an Olympian, and just actually be able to make this my life. This shit ain't easy. And we know this, this is selfish. And we feel that every day. And we feel bad for that, trust me. But it always helps when you have somebody who actually cares for you, loves you, and like I said, will go through those rough times and ride shotgun with you through it all. So I am forever thankful. I love this girl. And seriously guys, I wouldn't be where I am so if you're watching this and you are dating a bodybuilder and whether you're in the industry or not, be there for them. Trust me when I say that support is going to help propel them so much farther, not just physically, but mentally. Your body follows the mind. I'm a firm believer in that. And if you're sound up here, your support system helps with that. You're going to excel, not just in bodybuilding, but life. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys found some value out of this. This has been a subject that I've always wanted to talk about, but I feel like I can never find the right words. But I think today we found the right words. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, share this with somebody who you believe will find value in it. Share your stories below. If you have ever went through any kind of relationship issues, have you ever gr grown through any relationship issues, or if you've ever lost a relationship because of bodybuilding, I'm curious because there were certain points in our relationship where I didn't know where it was gonna go, but she stayed true and uh, forever thankful for it. So I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.